All right then, so this authentication process is going along pretty swimmingly. We can now sign up new users, which we can see over in our console, and we can also log out. Now, albeit we can't really do much with the user yet, and we're not offering much of a user experience, but I promise you that will come. But anyway, now we've seen how to sign up, and now we've seen how to log out. The next logical step is to see how to log a user back in. So we'll take the current user we already have that's signed up, they're currently logged out, but we'll log that user in, okay? So this is gonna be very similar to the sign up thing right here and the log out. We're just gonna create a new method on the auth object right here to sign the user in. Now, first of all, we need a reference to the login form, which is this thing right here. So let us go to index and find this login form to see what the ID is. That's create, that's the account. Okay, so here we go. Login hyphen form, that is the ID of the form. So let us now, first of all, get a reference to that. I'm gonna give us a little bit of room right here so we can see what we're doing. Then we'll create a new const and this is gonna be called login form like so. Just above this, let's do a comment so we know what each section is doing. Okay, so this login form is equal to document.query selector. And inside that we need to grab the login hyphen form. Okay, so we have that stored in the login form constant. Now we need to add an event listener and much like the sign up form, this is gonna be a submit event. So login form dot add event listener. It's gonna be a submit event and we fire a callback function which takes the event object automatically as a parameter into this arrow function. Okay then, so the first thing we need to do is prevent the default action by saying e.prevent default. That prevents the page from reloading. Then we wanna get the user info. Now we get it from the two input fields, right? We've got a email address field and a password field. We need to grab those things. So much like we did up here, you see when we use square bracket notation, on the form, so we're saying grab the sign up form and inside grab something with the ID of sign up email and sign up password. That gets us those input fields. We're gonna do the same thing down here, only this time it's not sign up, it's login. We have login email and login password. So let us now say inside auth.js, const email. And by the way, it doesn't matter that we're declaring a constant called email here and a constant called email up here. They both have their own separate scopes because they're nested inside their own callback function. So it doesn't matter, we're not overriding anything. They have their own local scopes, okay? So const email is equal to login and then form. And the first one we want is login email. That's the ID of the login email input. So we're grabbing that input. Now we want the value, so we say dot value. We want to do the same thing for the password, so const Password is equal to login form, and this time it's login hyphen password, like so. Then we want the value, so dot value at the end. Okay, cool. So we have that information. We've grabbed it from the user when they've typed it in. Now what we want to do is actually log that user in. So again, we use the auth object, same as the other two methods, only this time the method is called sign in with email and password. So sign in with email and password. I do wish that Firebase would actually make these methods a little shorter. I don't know what to, maybe they can't, but when I'm typing them, if there's any kind of errors, nine times out of 10, it's because I've spelled one of these methods incorrectly. So always check that you've done that. Anyway, we need to pass in an email and a password into this function right here. So the email is gonna be this thing and the password this thing. So let's just reference those two constants. So pass in the email and the password like so. Okay, so again, like the other two methods we've used to sign a user up and to log a user out, this is asynchronous. It takes some time to do, it returns a promise, and when it's done, it fires the callback function inside the then method, okay? So, like we get some kind of response when we sign a user in up here, which is a credential token, then we also get the same thing when we log a user in. So let us say right here, cred, for credential and then inside this arrow function we can do something with this user. Now to begin with let's console.log the credential. Now remember on that credential we have access to the user and all the information about that user on a user property so let's say dot user to log out that information. Okay now before we go and do this again after we've 
logged a user in. What do we want to do? We don't want this modal to stay open. We want to close it and we want to reset these form fields. So much like we closed the modal up here where we said const modal equals this thing and then we closed it, we're going to do the same thing down at the bottom. So let's copy this code. There's no point in us writing it out twice. And let us do a little comment to say close the login modal and reset the form. So paste this underneath. Now, this time the modal is going to be equal to document.query selector modal login. Remember, that is what the login modal is called, this thing right here. So we're grabbing that now and we're passing it into this function, get instance using the materialized library, and then we're closing that modal. Then we're getting the signup form. We don't want the signup form, we want the login form this time. So we're getting that login form and we're resetting it, which clears out the input fields inside it. Okay. So let's save this. Let's try and log this user in so that we can see that user in the console. So remember, we already created this user right here, Mario at the netninja.co.uk. We're currently though logged out of the application because we did that in the last video. I can demo that if I open up the console and we log out. Remember, we got this message, user signed out. So now the signed out of the application. Now, if we want to log in, we click on this. The email was mario at the net ninja.co.uk and the password, if I remember rightly, was test1234. Log the user in. It closes the modal and we get this credential or this user property from the credential logged to the console. So we can see now if we scroll down this email property, Mario at the net ninja, they are currently logged in to the application. Okay. So now my friends, we have covered signing a new user up logging a user out and also logging a user back in. So they are the three core things of Firebase authentication, right? Using email and password. We've covered those now. So now what we can start to do is harness the power of having a user logged in to start to show different things to logged in users, restricting data, adding new guides, that kind of thing. Okay, so we're going to use all of this information now that we have about users logging in and logging out of the application, signing up to the application, and we're going to do some cool stuff. But before we do that, what I'd like to do is show you how we can keep track of the user in the application. So a user might sign in, a user might log out, a user might log back in or sign up. How do we keep track of all of these different authentication changes inside the application and then do different things in the application dependent on that authentication change? Well, we want to somehow listen to the authentication status of a user, right? When the application first starts, we want to listen to, are they logged in? When did they sign up? When did they log out? So all of these changes we're going to listen to in the next video so that then we can start to show different things dependent on the status of the current user. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video to do exactly that.